Hey boys and boys, it's been a long time. I'm broadcasting from inside my mom's house's bathroom, and I've got a lot to cover, so let's start off with the topic I missed at first with health. Okay, so, it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. What I think is healthy versus what you, the audience, think is healthy versus what a professional athlete thinks is healthy. Different types of healthy. Okay? Maybe they share some qualities here and there, but really, there's a lot going on to it. And honestly, not everybody has the means to live as healthy as, you know, most people think um, should be healthy. Um, the foods that are cheap here by me are probably really expensive in other places, especially if it's, uh, what's it, the term, I think it's called a food desert, where that food or certain types of foods just don't grow in that area and they all have to be imported and then that kind of bumps the cost up and it makes it harder to buy it. So there's a number of reasons why some people can't get like all their vegetables or can't really have the, the nicest meals or they just, they just can't eat, you know, what the food pyramid says people should eat uh, for various reasons. So in terms of health, you know, you do what you do. <laughs> I do what I do. I mean, like, I'm a Coke Zero junkie. I just, I drink that stuff probably more than a human being should. But I do. And it's my body, so it's my choice. Yeah, I just busted that out. <laughs> but really, it is my choice. You know, whatever the fuck I put into my body, I put it into my body, and its consequences are mine. Um, that being said, you know, there are things I would like out of my health. I would like to be able to run without getting winded too much. I would like to have a decent amount of muscle. You know, kind of miss. Like, I, I like um, working out, lifting weights ever since junior high. <laughs> I was the last surviving member of my school's weightlifters club. <laughs> and back then when I was a girl, um, I, like, I all the other guys, like, Never. They came in, they came out. It was just so inconsistent. I came every time. And if I couldn't make it, I let them know. I was like, just so you know, I'm not going to be there. Okay, so. So yeah, health means a lot of different things. A lot of different people don't let me be all like, you have to do this, 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 and this. If you don't, you're not healthy. Not bad. Um, next topic was trans events, I believe. Um... I don't really get into many specific trans events, at least not that I know of. I have planned for like general LGBTQ things when I was in Glisten Youth Pride, um, which is a you know the the branch that we had was actually very excellent because um, they're very understanding of the fact that I'm trans, um, and things were really awesome the way that like people were very accepting and there was programming done that like I believe included trans people forgive me it's been a while since I've been to a meeting so it's like yeah, but anyway so I can't really say that I've planned or been to specific trans events besides like the local trans group thing that we have here but um so yeah now let's see questions let's see if I can remember them all off the top of my head um Kyle's question was if you could have any animal with like no consequences or anything like that. Um, I think I'd want to have a miniature pony. Because they're adorable. And a puppy. And a hamster. Lots of hamsters. Small animals. They're cuddly. <sighs> I, I've always loved that. I was almost going to be a veterinarian. Like that was like my life track set six years old. But different now. Oh well. Um, yeah, I'd have a lot of different animals, but um, I would definitely like to see miniature ponies because they're adorable. But anyway, next was, I believe it was Eli's question, which was, have I ever participated in the Day of the Silence or did I this year and what were my experiences? Uh, the first two experiences I had were kind of incomplete. I was pulled out of school both times for some reason. First reason was either I got sick or I just couldn't be there. I don't remember off the top of my head, but the second year was actually due to 
a pilonidal cyst, which if you're brave, go Google it. Um, it's not fun to have at all. It, oh my God, painful. Um, yeah, and when you can barely even like sit or lie down without feeling pain, staying silent at school is really not an option. It's really, really hard. Um, but, oh, now I know, now I remember why I couldn't do ninth grade, because, funny enough, there was a Russian-speaking competition that day, and it's really hard to be silent and have to participate in a speaking competition, so that didn't mesh very well. Um, so yeah, first year I had a speaking competition, couldn't stay silent the whole day. Second one was the cyst, which is worst thing ever. I was already like, I was decked out in all my day of silence stuff. Like I had t-shirt, rainbow this, rainbow that, pins, just all that. And then it was like, I can't stand it. So that's what happened with that. Um, uh, uh. This year I didn't do it. Um, mostly because functionally I had to talk and I don't know. I, Views are changing a little on it. Um, I'm not going to say you shouldn't be silent on the day. If you want to be silent, be silent. But um, I also think it's not a terrible thing if you speak. Like I used, uh, I've recently come, on the, uh, come to the position that to speak on the day of silence, if you're speaking um, in defense of it, if you're doing it, like, it's not a terrible thing. So long as you're not speaking to, like, harass the people who are silent um you know everyone's got their their own way of doing it but basically you know there's been a lot of silence already yeah and uh in a way it's almost kind of just as good i think to, to also get your voice out there even though you know even though other people are silent like it's it's no crime to, to be like hey hey we have problems you should listen to this hey only louder, but anyway, so probably running over time with this. Um, bear with me. Slight location change. My mom was coming upstairs, so I was like, "No, thank you." Um, Tristan's question: something about letters and defining us and LGBT, and that's kind of what I understood from the question. So I'm gonna go with what I think was the question, which was, "Do you think like the letters are what define us or something?" Um. Which I would say no, you know, the, just because I'm part of the T doesn't mean I'm completely T, that everything about me is T, um, you know, and I don't think, um, in a way sometimes it can be, you know, labels can be limiting in a way, um, especially when other people decide to set the limits and uh, decide who can you go beyond the point and who doesn't, you know. Um, so yeah, I, uh, forgive me, it was kind of hard to understand, so I was like, I don't know. Anyway, then there was Kyle's next question, which was, when did you get first cell phone? And I think I got mine when I was like 14, late junior high, early high school. I remember because in junior high, I would use the pay phone, and I would use that, that advertisement with Care Top, the like the 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T Care Top scares me, oh my god Anyway, so yeah, it was like around that time I would get my cell phone and I rarely used it until like maybe my senior year when I finally got an upgrade to my phone and like it was one that I actually could stand to use so I used that one a lot more and stuff but like my first, very first cell phone was when I was like late junior high age, um, and what kind of pets do you have, and it's changed a lot recently, it used to be that, like, we, last year, we had three dogs, between two houses, mind you, three dogs, two of my dad's, uh, one of my mom's, um, and six cats, four of my dad's, two of my mom's, at my mom's house, the dog we had is a miniature pincher. She's adorable. She's loud and she's kind of like demands attention and food a lot, but she's still 
However, um, the cats, we have a calico cat and then this like long haired Persianish cat, but like not with the, the, the nose thing. Um, but she, you know, kind of old, like 10, 11 ish. You know, I remember having her like when the Sydney Olympics were going on. So at my dad's house, there's a sort of Corgi mix and the Beagle mix. Um, and they were both adorable as ever, but mischievous. Oh my God. One of them would like go to the bathroom all over the house and the other would like eat anything she could get her mouth on. And it was often very stressful with them around. Um, and the cats we had, we had all a number of like mixed breed cats. Um, and the way, what I noticed was that they kind of were like, progressively, you could line them up from lightest to darkest. So you'd have like an all white, long haired, beautiful cat. She's so adorable. Um, and then the next one would be like white with a bunch of gray spots all over. And the next one's mostly gray with a little bit of white. And then finally our last patch was like completely black, save for like a little spot here and a ring on her tail. It was kind of funny like that. So yeah, we had a lot of pets. Um, now then, now then. I'm trying to think of a question for this week. Hmm. What's your favorite scent? Like something that whenever you smell it, it's just like. You know, it could be anything. It could be the smell of freshly mowed grass, it could be the smell of a food, it could be the smell of like your grandma's perfume or something. Um, you know, anything. My favorite scent, and I plan to get a candle for this at some point because they always have them. Um, like vanilla e cupcake, whatever is like I love the smell of like that that cake, that vanilla scent just every time we go into like a Yankee candle or any any store with a bunch of candle scents and they have that there, I'm just like grabbing it. I like it. So yeah. Um that was my video. Um maybe I'll you know See you next week. The way my video patterns have been going on, who knows? <laughs> uh, so yeah, see you boys and boys.